Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their star drive ship when a patrol ship piloted by a spy, Matthew Smead, suddenly approaches. Keep watching Smead in the periscope, Hap. I'll blast away to another part of space. Yes, sir. Hey, Commander, what's wrong? Our rocket's cut out. The emergency units are dead. We're in free fall. You're completely helpless, Corey. The space is It's me. There is no escape, Commander. You're prisoners of Tirana. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, Prisoners of Tirana. Captain Dufel, think this is a pretty good spot to watch the boat races? No, oh, have the seawall's kind of high. Well, just peer through your periscope like I'm going to do. You'll see everything clear as day. Hey, that's right. The Space Patrol periscope is a big 24 inches high, tapered special for wide-angle vision. And the Space Patrol periscope's got two magic mirrors that let you see around corners, over fences, and around trees, and over bushes. But nobody can see you. Yes, sir, gang. You see without being seen. And say, you'll like the neat periscope colors, too. Blue, yellow, and red. And on every periscope, there's a special place for your name, address, even your solar system. Real keen for space spying. Or for spying on your Earth pals. Remember, Space Patrol Periscope works for you, like magic. You can see around corners and trees, over fences and bushes, but nobody can see you. Now, Space Patrollers, if you don't want to miss out on all the fun you can have with a periscope, you better hurry, because this offer is limited. So right away, today, send a rice check. Or wheat checks, box top, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Prisoners of Toronto. Within the past few weeks, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have captured several spies from Toronto a warlike group of planets that's intending to attack the solar system. But in spite of these arrests, Buzz has been unable to learn much about the enemy forces or the time set for the attack. Attempts to capture Tirana's chief spy, known on the United Planets as Matthew Smead, have thus far failed. Right now, Cadet Happy is just entering Commander Corey's central office on Terra. Oh, sorry I'm late, Commander. I was in the gym taking the workout, and I just got your message to see you're keeping in shape, huh? Your exercise hasn't made you too tired for a space flight, right? Oh, I'd never be that tired, sir. Good. A few hours ago, an unidentified ship blasted off and sat in six miles. What about the tow ship space upon the pilot to stand by to be boarded? Instead, the ship poured on more power and then vanished. Vanished? Uh-huh. It didn't explode, it just disappeared. There's only one thing. And in the star drive, vanished into hyperspace. That means it was a ship from Tirana. Right. I've been making things very uncomfortable for Matthew Smead, and I figure he's going back to enemy headquarters to report. Uh, are we going after him? No, not exactly. We're going to scout around Tirana with our new space patrol periscope and find out what they're up to. When a spy leaves enemy territory in a rush hat, he's encountered one of two things. Either he's afraid of being caught, or his own forces are ready to attack. Uh-oh. Tirana may be all set to invade the solar system. That's what we're going to find. Let's get to the spaceport and blast off in the star drive. Tirana is a planetary system 80 light years from the sun in the constellation Pegasus. The vast distance is traversed in an amazingly short time in the star drive ship using a hyperspace principle across the barriers of ordinary space and time. Buzz has set the hyperspace vector computer to bring the ship out of star drive a considerable distance from Tirana. I've just completed the application check, sir. That star is Tirana, all right, and we're 300 million DUs away from it. Good. What we picked up from those captured spies were well outside the orbit of the outermost planet. Check the viewscopes carefully. Huh? Yes, sir. So far, we're alone in space. Now you watch out for ships. I'll locate the planets. Mm, that's going to be some job. There are Fifteen of them. We'll start with the seventh planet from Tirana. It's the main one of the system. Our job now is to locate the principal cities and any concentration of spaceships. Map set up the periscope while I figure out which of those planets is Tirana 7. A 
Although the name of General Mognir means nothing to Buzz and Happy, it's a name spoken with dread on the planets of a dozen solar systems throughout the galaxy. As head of the intelligence section of the Tyrannian forces, General Mognir has directed the vast network of spies that have laid the groundwork for the defeat and slavery of the inhabitants of scores of planets. At this moment, in his headquarters in the capital city of Tolana, Mognir sits before a huge chart of our own solar system, glowering at a man who stands before him. His visitor is known to the Space Patrol as Matthew Smee. Agent Katurig reporting, General. You made fast time from the United Planets, Mr. Your message ordered me to return to Tirana immediately. I'm glad to see that you obey at least one of my commands. Do you know what I told you? No, sir. Our forces are ready to attack, perhaps? Not quite. And if all our agents are like you, we never will be. Well, I have done my best, General. So we have sent to the United Planets to obtain data on their defenses. To send us samples of their weapons. You have failed by. Some of my top assistants were captured. All of my work was undone. And how did they happen to be captured? I, I had a run of bad luck, General. Bad luck, indeed. Bad luck is a sniveling phrase used to excuse carelessness, inefficiency. Worse. What do you mean? Perhaps you are tired of being the historic agent of Tirana. You wish to spend the rest of your life as Matthew Sneed in the United Planet. I am loyal to Tirana, I swear it. Your achievements to date certainly don't speak well for your loyalty, Mr. Smith. You have permitted the enemy to know of our coming attack. Thus, you have robbed our own forces of the important weapons. Surprise! By general! The United Planet forces will be ready to fight! Otherwise, we could have taken it back. General, listen, I have please. time to discuss the matter with you. So, give me a new assignment. There's an opening on one of our captive planets, sir. The best job. I'm eager to serve Piranha any way you see fit, General. What planet is it? Jakala. Jakala? But that's the plague spot of the galaxy. Yes. The climate is foul, the insects are large and poisonous, and the inhabitants greatly resent the Piranian rule. General Mogler, before I accept this this new assignment... Your acceptance is already in the fact. Tomorrow morning, a spaceship leaves for the tower. You will be on it. Now, please understand, as I say, I'm willing to take... I have a call here. You don't mind. Sorry, General. Mogler. Yes. Yes, what's it like? Okay, sir. And its origin? No, no, don't attack Keep it under observation until further orders, Mogner. Very interesting. Very interesting. Something wrong? Nothing wrong. Except that an unidentified spaceship is cruising outside the orbit of Planet 15. Obviously a star glide ship. Because it got to our outer perimeter warning system. There is a problem. It's a spy ship from the United Planets. That's impossible. They have only one star drive ship in operation. One is enough. You got here in one ship, didn't you? Well, if there's uh, one of them, it can be dangerous. Our patrols can blast it to pieces. Of course. I expect a brilliant idea like that from you, Kasori. Here we have a splendid piece of enemy technology right on our back doorstep. Something you haven't been able to provide us, and you want to blast it to pieces. I should have sent you to Tikala long ago. General, if, if I captured that ship, will you reconsider the Jakala assignment? Don't be ridiculous. Please, General, I admit I failed to an extent. But I do know more about the United Planets than anyone in Tirana. I know their weapons and the way their pilots think. Give me a chance to get that ship. All right. All right. But if you fail, you'll be on your way to Jakala tomorrow morning. Elsewhere, with their star drive ship at low velocity, Buzz and Happy are scanning the surface of Tirana 7 millions of DUs away through their space patrol periscope. Using an optical principle that operates through hyperspace, the periscope can focus on any point, even penetrate buildings. During the past few moments, thousands of square miles of the planet have been projected on the image mirror of a periscope. That's the biggest city we've seen in Tirana so far, Commander. Now I've got to focus on a street. Nothing strange about the people. Except their clothes. See if you can find a spaceport or a manufacturing center. Yes, sir. If we only had a map of Tehran, we could 
set the periscope for exact coordinates. As it is, we're just working hit or miss. Once we find one good target, it'll help us locate others. Yeah, we can look at inside offices in the map room. We find the military headquarters might be able to locate their plans for attack. Commander, I think I've got something. Take a look at the periscope. Never mind that. Check number three view scope screen. A spaceship. I wonder if they've seen it. Check the vector hat. Yes, sir. Now, one good thing, it's still a long way off. Now we can probably get away. Well, not yet. First, we use our periscope. We set up the coordinates on the focusing control and see what that ship looks like up close. Yeah, maybe we can tell what kind of element it's got. Better yet, we can see inside the control compartment. The image of our ship is in our view scope, so we know it's time to get moving. It's changing vector slightly, sir. We've got it in the periscope now. Is it a star drive job, sir? Okay. It's smaller than the Corona ships. The ones that we've seen scouting on the solar system. Say it's just slightly larger than our ship. Hey, if it isn't Star Drive, we stand a good chance of getting away. The periscope's in the pilot now. Have to take a look. Yes, sir. Smoking rockets. It's Matthew Smee. Big as life and twice as ugly. How they expect to run into him. I don't like that look on his face. But, but then, come to think of it, I never did. He's smug. No wonder he's got our ship in his view scope screen. Hey, what's he up to? Trying to get closer without tipping us off that he sees us? He may be relaying our position to other ships. For the time being, we'll continue our scouting mission from another part of space. Brace yourself, Happy, and I'll blast away from here. Yes, sir. Hey. Hey, what happened? Our rockets cut out. The emergency units are dead. We're in free fall. Well, we'll find time for this to happen. I'll check the instruments, sir. As you speed, calling Commander Corey upward, United Planet Star Drive, ship number one. Speed to Commander Corey. Pat, get to the periscope and watch Smeed. Yes, sir. Corey here. Go ahead, Smeed. If you are wondering what happened to your rockets, you're in range of my null ray beam. You're completely helpless. Not quite. Try coming aboard and find out. This time we're playing at my way. There is no escape, Corey. You and your ship are prisoners of Tirana. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Peer through your periscope, Space Patrollers, and you'll see around corners and over fences. Around trees and over bushes. But nobody will see you. Yes, that's the way the magic mirrors of a Space Patrol periscope work. You see, but are never, never seen. Take it with you as you watch a football game or parade. You won't miss a thing, and you'll see right over the heads of the crowd. And when you want to play at being a space spy, here's something that'll come in mighty handy. It's a special identification chart printed right on your periscope. It shows you exactly what the people who live in all the major planets might look like. Yes, sir, space patrollers, you sure can have a lot of fun peering through your periscope. And say, you put it together yourself. That's right, all 24 inches of it. Easy direction to write on the envelope it comes in. You can do it quick as a flash, and then you're all set to start peering through your space patrol periscope. But hurry and send for yours today. This terrific offer is almost over. Just send our rice checks or wheat checks box top. Together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, Prisoners of Tirana. Cruising at low velocity, millions of BUs from Tirana 7... Buzz and Happy are scanning the surface of the planet for military installations with their Space Patrol periscope. Sighting a Tyranian spaceship, they focus the periscope inside the control compartment and discover the pilot is a Tyranian spy known to them as Matthew Smeed. When they attempt to elude the enemy ship, Smeed cuts off their rocket power with a null ray. As he closes in on their helpless ship, spaceophoning instructions to them, Buzz and Happy watch the spy through their periscope. Listen carefully, Commander. My ship has been designed so that its airlock will couple with your United Planet ship. When I join airlock, would you come aboard? Suppose we don't. You have no choice. I have weapons aboard this ship that can render you incapable of resistance. In your space torpedoes, the Nauri makes them useless. All right, Smeed, we'll come aboard. As much as we can about that ship, what the layout is, and how it operates. When they go aboard, if the chance comes, we'll jump in. We have to operate this ship with no help from Smee. Yes, sir. He's maneuvering up to the airlock now, sir. I'm watching. His controls are very similar to ours. 
I think I know the placement in the panel. What about weapons? It's some sort of a gun, the holster. The ship's right alongside ours, and our velocities match. I know how he works the airlock holding field control. The switch he's pressing now is probably his space operator. Our ships are joined, Corey. You were right, Commander. Corey, do you hear me? Yes, Meade, I hear you. Then come aboard. And I'm warning you, at the first sign of a weapon, I'll be ready for you. So don't get any ideas. All right, Smeed. Let's go. Open the inner hatch. How about it, sir? Shall we take a chance on getting in with our ray guns? Oh, not now. Play along with them till we see a chance that'll pay off. I'll go first. Raise your hands. Both of you. That's it. Now, step over there where I can watch you. Come on. That's fine. Commander, I'm very grateful for your timely arrival. What do you mean? When I turn you over to General Mognir, it will restore me to his good graces. Yeah? Who's General Mognir? He's the chief of the Tyrannian intelligence section. He'll be delighted to hear that I not only captured you or ship but the commander-in-chief of the space patrol as well. Don't move, Corey. Just to be on the safe side, I'd better quiet you down with this M-ray gun. Oh, don't be alarmed. It's similar to your paralyzer ray. You'll be conscious, but unable to make any rash move. Let's get him, Hap. Oh. Quite effective, isn't it? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll space upon General Mognir for instructions. Although unable to move, Buzz and Happy intently watch Smeed and listen as the spy carries on a space phone conversation with General Mognir in the Taranian language. Cutting off the transmitter, Smeed adjusts the spaceship controls, completely ignoring his helpless captain. Finally, as the planet looms large in the nose port, Smeed turns to Buzz and Happy. Next planet, gentlemen, is Tirana 7, capital of the Tyrannian system. What of it? Well, I thought you might like to know. It might be your home for some time, depending, of course, on how the general plans to dispose of you. What are you going to do when we reach the planet? Parade us through the streets? No. It would not do to let the general public know that an enemy ship has penetrated our defense screen. It might cause uneasiness. Your own ship will be left temporarily at an unused base on Tirana 7. As soon as I detach your ship from mine, you will be taken to the spaceport of our capital city. There you will be interviewed privately by General Mognir. I can hardly wait. I must warn you, Cadet. The General has no patience with impudence. Oh, there's one matter that will have to be attended to before we reach Tirana 7. Your uniform. What about them? Well, they would attract attention, give rise to rumors and speculation. When we step out of the ship, you will be dressed as Tyrannian civilians. And remember, treat General Mognir as he deserves. I sure will, if I get the chance. Hours later, Smeed sets down his spaceship at the spaceport of Tirana's capital city. Commander Corey's star drive ship has been left at a deserted base some miles away. The effects of the M-ray having worn off, Buzz and Happy are marched in front of Smeed across the landing strip to the administration building. Dressed in Tyrannian clothes, they attract no attention from the throngs of the crowded spaceport. Right now, they're in an office where a thick-set man in full military regalia stares at them with cold, penetrating eyes. At last, the general speaks. Ravaga Blase, General. Mushkalata Karukori. Other Kala, Kadet Hop, Plum. Now we will continue this discussion in the United Planets language of the people. I'm General Mogner, the chief of the intelligence section of the Imperial Tyrannian Space Army. It's the purpose of the Empire of Tyrannia to liberate the people of your solar system, I expect you to die. You said uh, liberate, General. Don't you mean enslave? It doesn't matter. It has been decided that your planets are to come under Tyrannian rule. We want to achieve this with as little violence and destruction as possible. If you work with us, you can save the lives of your people. Whether I help or not, you're going to have a fight in your hands. And get this straight. I'm not going to tell you a thing. And that goes for me, too. 
You heard the general. Speak up. That's enough of that, Pesorek. No violence here. And I might think we are mistreating our own civilians. I am sorry, General. There will be work. In a quiet place. Then they will be executed as spies. And with the full support of our population, we will launch an attack on the other uh, General, uh, may I assume that, uh, that the Jakala assignment is no longer in effect? That's right. In fact, I am conceding a promotion. Thank you. Thank you, General. I could almost say that your renewed faith in me is reward enough. Thank you. Stop phoning, Kosorak. You know I can't get the General happy. Yes, sir. Kosorak, you got to use it. I'll take it. My arm. My arm. I I got the General, Commander. Leads out, too. I hope nobody heard the racket. What do we do now? We're on a strange planet. Well, these town and close. Maybe we can get the ship without attracting attention. Well, what about these two? They'll be coming out of it pretty quick. Oh, the supply closet over there. We'll drag them in and shut the door and use Smead's m ray gun on them as an extra precaution. Come on, Hap. Let's work fast. Locking the Tyranian general and his spy in the closet, Buzz and Happy walked out of the office with affected casualness. Silently, they retraced their steps through the administration building and out into the spaceport. Right now, they're within a few yards of Smead's ship. We're okay so far, Commander. Luckily, nobody had occasion to talk to us. Well, my knowledge of Tyrannian is pretty limited. All right, I'll come to the ship. Yeah, nobody seems to care. At least I don't see anybody coming out to investigate. Close the hatch out. Now, I can remember how Smead operated these controls. Hey, Commander, what if they have a space control here? We have to get space upon instructions to blast off. We're certainly going to wait around to find out. We'll check the view scope to see if there are any other ships landing or blasting off. Yes, sir. Now yeah, the controls. First need press this lever. Me. We're all clear in every direction, Commander. Get set, Hat. Got to fire a rocket. <laughs> Going, Commander. We've got to find that deserted base in our own ship before we're safe. I just hope no one goes looking for General Mogner until we're completely off Tarana. Flying high above the surface of Tarana 7, Buzz and Happy scan the terrain, searching for the abandoned base. With only his memory and sense of direction to guide him, Buzz watches the ground below for familiar landmarks, mountains, rivers, and stretches of plain that he has seen only once before. Meantime, Happy checks the view scope for a sign of pursuit. At last, Buzz puts the ship into a rapid descent toward a barren stretch of ground where a single spaceship waits. You did it, Commander. Wow, I wouldn't have found that ship in a month. The next few minutes, tell the story, Hap. Judging from her own experience with that Emre, Smead and the General should be able to move pretty soon. Yeah, they'll have every ship on the planet looking for us. I'm going to set down as close to our ship as I can, Hap. And I warn you, this landing may be rough. Wow. Commander, you, you handle this crate like you've just finished a 50-hour refresher course. Well, not aboard the old star drive. Hap, and... Hap, the view scope. It's a ship. It looks like it's heading right for us. Put a landing back there. Right? What I've seen, there are no cities within 300 miles of this place. He's coming for us. We'd better, we'd better make a run for the star drive, sir. We wouldn't have a chance. Yeah, that's right. He could stop us with a null ray before we got off the ground. No, way. that's it. We'll fight him off with our own weapons. I remember how Smeed worked. He turned this gadget here, I think. Yes, that's it. There's a barn at night. An intensity aid. Now, if I can focus it right. Check that ship's vector hat. It's decelerating, sir. Dropping lower. Now it's steady. I think he's in the beam half. His power's off. He can't do anything now but continue in free fall. At his present vector, he'll go clear over. If he misses that range of mountains, he'll be lucky. Come on, half. Into our ship and blast off. Blasting off without further opposition, Buzz and Happy accelerate under rocket power, watching Piranha 7 grow smaller in their rear view scope. Have you worked out the hyperspace vector yet, Commander? Not quite, Happy. Huh? I won't feel safe until we're in star drive and away from the whole Tarana system. You've got to reach higher velocity, Happy. The mass factor of that star on the 15 planets is pretty high for a safe transition in the star drive. Commander, another ship's after us. Use a periscope, Happy. If we can find out what their plan of attack is, we can stall them off. Yes, sir. I'll line it up on you. They use an all ray on us before we get in the star drive. We're sunk. I've got the ship, Commander. How do we adjust the focus inside the control compartment? Commander, 
It's General Mogner. And Sneed. What are they doing? Just watching the view scope. It sure looks sore, especially the general. Uh-oh. The general's reaching for the null ray control. He must be within range. Have standby to fire space torpedoes. Standing by, sir. When you're on target, fire. It probably won't stop them, but it may delay them a few seconds. I'll check the periscope. They changed vector, huh? Well, near left the null ray and is working at another part of the control panel. Trying to dodge our torpedo, huh? Uh-oh. The torpedo exploded. But it missed them. Blew it up at a force field, probably. What about our velocity, sir? Is it high enough? Very nearly. There's the general reaching for the null ray control again. Let's lob another torpedo in. Too late half of the time it reaches them. The null ray will be on. We're going into star drive. made it. We're safe in hyperspace. For the moment. But we won't be completely safe until we put an end to the menace from Tirana. There's a way to stop them, Happy, and we're going to find it. We've got to. An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. Smoke and rockets, a moon man from Saturn, a bird man from Mercury, and a giant from Jupiter. Wow! I'd sure hate to meet up with any of these weird characters on a dark night out in space. Uh, that is, without my space patrol periscope. Hey, space patrollers, I was just looking over this special identification chart that's printed on the periscope. It shows you exactly what all the outer space citizens might look like, and believe me, they're plenty scary looking. But when you peer at them through your mirror eye of your periscope, you'll see them, but they will never, never see you. It's like magic. You can see around corners and over fences, around trees and over bushes, but nobody can see you. And gang, you'll have a real George time with your periscope right here on Earth, looking over the heads of tall people. The periscope's high enough, a big 24 inches. You can find secret hiding places, spy on your pals, jump in Jupiter. It's terrific. But you better move fast, because this super sensational offer ends soon. Hey, here's Captain Tufel. He's going to tell you how to get a Space Patrol periscope. Send the rice checks or wheat checks box top, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents and your rice checks or wheat checks box top. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bite-sized checks taste good to me. Bite-sized checks. Wheat checks. Rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. And now, a preview of next week's exciting space football adventure. Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits aboard a wrecked spaceship, stranded on a meteor. Through the nose port, they watch an enemy spaceship land. Speed ship, all right, Commander. Have your ray gun ready, Hap. We'll give them a fight. Yes, sir. And they're shining some sort of light on us. Wow, what a glare. Don't look at it. Some kind of a special ray. Drop it to the deck. I can still see the light even with my eyes shut. It's burning into my brain. Why did it have? Keep low. Commander, everything's turning black. If we can work our way aft and get some shielding between us and the ray. But... No use, Commander. I can't move. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Invasion from Piranha, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer and Baylor Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks present exciting action on Space Patrol. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.